today what we're going to do is try to get a handle on what happens if we use positive feedback. You know, it's, a, it's the usual curious child. You, you tell them, you know, you do this, and of course they're going to try to do this as well. And uh, we're going to try to do that and see what, uh, see what happens and look to see if we can build some useful circuits. So today, So as uh, motivation, let me do a quick review of a circuit that uh, should now become a fixed in your brains in a standard pattern. So uh, this is a circuit that gives you uh, negative feedback. R1 and R2. And I apply a V in. So by now, you should, be, you should be able to look at this pattern. And this is your inverting amplifier pattern. So you should be able to write down by inspection, this is simply V in, or the minus V in times R2 divided by R1. Okay? So this is an amplifier whose gain is controlled by the ratio of R2 and uh, R1. So this is a negative feedback circuit because... You know, it's always fun to do the intuition thing and say that, look, if this voltage tends to go more positive than I care, then this negative input goes more positive than I care. If that goes more positive, then the negative input V minus becomes more, neg uh, becomes more positive than the plus input, which yanks the output down. Okay, so there's a nice counteracting force that keeps the output stable. So let's look at this circuit, you know, being... Uh, curious engineers, let's look at the opposite here, uh, where I give myself some uh, positive feedback in this op amp. And uh, it's going to be interesting to analyze this, because what we what we find out on the face of it is not quite how it actually behaves. So uh, we're going to spend most of the lecture today on understanding the dynamics of circuits that look like this and to see if we can build some fun and interesting circuits and systems based on this kind of positive feedback. Okay? It's positive feedback because I'm feeding back a portion of the output to the positive input. And you should be able to stare at this and, and already begin to intuit what should happen to this. Okay, let's think about it. This is zero. Okay, remember, if with positive feedback, the famous V plus is equal to V minus method doesn't apply anymore. Okay, so uh, let's uh, applying you know very simple analyses. If this is zero, okay, let's say for example that this output tends to go a little bit more positive. Okay, this output due to some noise or perturbation tends to go up a little bit. If that goes up a little bit, then because of feedback, this node tends to go up a little bit. If this node tends to go up a little bit, this exacerbates the positive input here, and this one goes ka-chunk, you know, whacks into the positive rail. Okay, let's take the other point of view and look at it intuitively. What if this one tries to droop a little bit? Like if it droops a little bit, then the input at, at the plus terminal droops a little bit. If that tends, tends to go down a little bit, that makes the output droop further, and it goes and hits into the negative rail. So you can see that this circuit wants to hammer into the positive rail or hammer into the negative rail uh, because of the positive feedback. You know, it's like uh, if you give incredibly positive feedback all the time, and by positive feedback I mean feedback encouraging a child to do whatever the child is doing. Okay, so it could be if he does bad stuff, you give a lot of positive feedback, or good stuff, you give a lot of positive feedback. Now you are guaranteed to have a very good child or a very bad child. Okay, you, you ain't going to have you know, anybody in the middle. Same way here, you know, by giving positive feedback, you're, you're going to drive this into the positive rail or drive this into the negative rail. Now, I'm going to analyze this in two steps. First, I'm going to analyze this using a method you've seen before, which is replace the op-amp with its equivalent circuit and analyze it statically. 
Okay? And by analyzing statically, we're going to show that the simple static analysis will, ye will yield the following expression. I put this in quotes, uh, well, for a reason you will see shortly. Okay, when I apply a plain and simple static analysis, here is what I find. Okay, and uh, let's go ahead with the analysis and see what is basically different about these two. Okay, and first of all, I'll confirm for you that our naive analysis we've seen so far will give rise to that expression. So let's go ahead and uh, analyze uh, that circuit. And to analyze that circuit, what I'll do is replace the op amp with its equivalent circuit. So if you remember, the uh, op amp is characterized by the following circuit, A times V plus minus V minus V out. So uh, this is the equivalent circuit of my uh, op amp. And uh, let me just uh, impose that external circuit on this op amp. So uh, I've grounded my V minus terminal. My V plus terminal goes through a resistor and a supply, the V into ground. It's the resistance R1. This terminal goes to the output through a resistor R2. Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit, and I can, and I can apply the same good old techniques I, I've learned about all through this course to this circuit and see what V out, uh, see or, see what V out looks like. So uh, very simply, V out is this expression here, A V plus minus V minus, and uh, because of my ground connection, V minus is zero. So then, let me go ahead and replace V plus with the voltage uh, that relates V out and V in. So what is V plus? So V plus is simply the current through this part of the circuit, the current flowing here, times the resistance R1. That gives me the drop across R1. And to that, I add V in, and that will give me V plus. Okay? So... Uh, and then, of course, I uh, multiply this by the gain here. So uh, let me write down that, uh, that expression. So the current through this is simply V out minus V in. So that's the voltage drop between these two points. I divide that by the resistance R1 plus R2. That gives me the current flowing through here. That times R1 is the drop across resistor R1. And to that, I add... V in, and that gives me the voltage V plus. Okay, so this is that's V plus. That's simply V in plus the drop across the resistance R1. Okay, so let me uh, shuffle things around and uh, put all the V out terms on this side here. So I get a one plus for that uh, V out, and let me move. Uh, a R1 divided by R1 plus R2 to the left-hand side. And I pick up a minus sign. So I get A R1 divided by R1 plus R2. So I pick up that. And then left-hand side, I end up with V in. Okay? And my V in here is a function of the V in that I have here. So... Uh, I have an A multiplying both the V ins. And then uh, I get a 1 for uh, this V in here. And uh, there's a minus sign. So I get a minus R1 divided by R1 plus R2. Okay, that's the expression that I have. Okay, um, let me go ahead and simplify that a little further and uh, move this whole thing down here. And uh, that gives me uh, my expression as a function of Vn. So uh, what I'll do is let me continue here. So V out is V in A, 1 minus R1 divided by R1 plus R2. By the way, you may be wondering, why am I going through uh, so laboriously, you know, what, what is seemingly a very simple exercise? 
The reason I want to do it is I want to very carefully show you that the result produced by this exercise is exactly that. No magic here, okay? No cheating. We're going to, we're going to get exactly that and then stare at it and say, huh? You know, how did that happen? Okay, and then we're going to, we're going to try to figure out uh, how it actually behaves uh, following that. So uh, I divide this by 1 minus a r1 divided by r1 plus r2. Okay, and, and by now you should be familiar with the technique of ignoring um, small numbers when I have a big number next to it. So a r1 divided by r1 plus r2 uh, can be very much larger than 1 because a is very large. So I can uh, ignore my 1 there. And then what I'm going to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by r1 plus r2. Oh, um, this a and this a is going to cancel out. This a and this a will then cancel out. And then I multiply the numerator and denominator by r1 plus r2. So this r1 plus r2 vanishes. I get r1 plus r2 here. r1 plus r2 minus r1 is simply r2. And then down here, I get a r1. And then I have a minus sign out there. OK? So, uh, so look, notice that v out, we have found to be equal to v in r2 divided by r1. OK, that's not wrong. That's correct. OK? Technically, that's correct. OK, but you will see in a few seconds that in practice, that that's really what you're going to see, uh, uh, what you're going to see happen. And we'll try to understand why that is so. So what we've done so far, if you stare at uh, these two uh, the panels here, <clears throat> first of all, we know that the inverting amplifier has the expression for V out up there. And through this uh, laborious exercise, we've also shown that even with positive feedback, if I take a static view of the circuit, if I take a snapshot of the circuit, and simply analyze it as a static circuit, I get the same expression V out. Okay, for, for, for V out. But what we're going to do is, when I explain to you that, look, a small perturbation in V out is going to drive the op amp to the positive and negative rail. Okay, so that's where the insight begins to show that if everything were magical, okay, and I could somehow exactly keep things just so, that will be true. I will be able to build a positive feedback circuit where the output is equal to R2 divided by R1 Vn. But remember, even the slightest amount of perturbation is going to send the op amp, you know, uh, scurrying off to the positive rail or the negative rail. So how do we analyze that? How do we analyze the behavior of a circuit that, you know, based on a small perturbation, uh, you know, begins to move uh, one place or another? Okay, we want to analyze the dynamics of the op amp. Okay, to analyze the dynamics, what I need to do is give you a slightly more detailed view of the operational amplifier. Okay, if, if the operational amplifier is not moving instantaneously between uh, uh, the plus and minus rail, I need to give you a more detailed model that uh, encapsulates the behavior of the op-amp. 